Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Verma. I must say it is a pleasure uh, being here this morning uh, uh, with uh, these uh, brilliant youngsters, uh, Mayur, Ajay, Kanaya, and listening to these uh, bright uh, young people in the morning, uh, Priyanka and uh, Rakesh. Uh, how, you know, we started with those primitive bovine porcine insulins and today we are looking at a possibility of making a gram positive and gram, gram negative diagnosis of an organism in diabetic foot on a, on a tool uh, which was unimaginable even 20, 10 years back. And I still remember, you know, uh, Rakesh, uh, when first time in PGI time, you know, somebody wanted to introduce us a glycometer. How disdainfully we rejected it. How can it be as good as calorimeter and things like that? And now, you know, uh, in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes, I'll just be uh, washing through, you know, what has been happening to globe in, in our own lifetime. You know, uh, Dr. Trivedi was just talking about 50 years of his experience treating diabetes. Everything has changed it topsy-turvy from concept to the actual happenings. Uh, in these decades, and so is uh, the, uh, this uh, diabetic in the young population. Now, what do we mean young population? Usually, we, uh, you know, up to 18, we take it as a pediatric population, and beyond that, up to 40 years, a young population. And many studies have included also for a fifth birthday. Why is it different that it needs to be discussed differently? As I'll tell you in the next 10 minutes, Obesity is slowly creeping in all societies, including ours. And surprisingly, uh, it has been seen far worse in socioeconomically lower people in the Western world because the socioeconomically higher people now have started getting educated themselves on lifestyle diseases. You know, if you look at the Western world, looking at the United States, they say Afro-Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian uh, uh, Americans, Diabetes far more in them because they get on hooked onto uh, because they are from more uh, disadvantageous societies and uh, they are seeing first generation the pleasures of good eating and it's giving them problems. So ethnicity, we in India don't need all this. We seem to be predisposed to it. Uh, family history of diabetes and things like that. Now there is a global group. Uh, which is known as Non-Communicable Diseases Collaboration Group. And we have been a part of it for a good part of a decade. And uh, we've been looking at how these non-communicable diseases have been doing globally in the last uh, half a century, six years, 40 years. And this is the data that we published in Lancet uh, in uh, May issue of uh, 2016 which was a reflection of what was happening in the previous half a century in the world in terms of diabetes, in terms of obesity. Here we are fundamentally concerned about India. And if you look at it, just this slide, this will give you a basic inkling what is happening globally and what is happening to us, which is more irrelevant. Look on the left side of this slide and you will see that in 1975, if you look in terms of absolute number of obese individuals. We were at position number 19. It means if you look at absolute number, the count numbers, we were at position number 19. And you must remember in 1975, also we were a huge populous nation. Even uh, imagine, look at that position number seven, even Ukraine had more obese people. Poland had more obese people. Now look at 2014. Indian men stand at position number five. It means proportionately, in terms of absolute number of obese people, the number is increasing. And if that was insufficient, look at what is happening to women. In 1975, women also were at position number 19. But today in our country, we have the third highest absolute number of obese women after China and the United States. And this is what is new. And when we're looking at that uh, epidemic of diabetes, it's important to realize uh, for our youngsters, this is another study that the same group published in Lancet only uh, in 2016, looking at how uh, obesity has been behaving during this period. Now look at it. When I was a postgraduate in 1980, India had presumed 
11.9 million diabetics. And this study showed that in 2014, we had 64 million diabetics, which have now blown to almost 80 million diabetics. But what is extremely relevant to understand, it is numbers have increased, there's no doubt in it. But what is happening as the obesity goes up, the diabetes occurs early. And the age at which type 2 diabetes is occurring is now much earlier. Now, when I'm talking about 80s and that 11 million, uh, usually diabetes would occur in late 40s and early 50s. And life expectancy was 58. So the glycemic burden on the vascular system, on the body in totality, on glomerulus, on retina, on endothelium, would be for a relatively short period of time because most of the people would be taken care of by uh, infections. Now, today, the same uh, diabetes occurring at 30. And fellow expecting to live up to 80 years. This glycemic burden on this body is going to be from half a century. And that's what is different. And what trend <coughs> we have shown here of obesity, the same thing we showed, you know, we thought it was a phenomena in Kashmir only. But we saw the same trend taking off from 20th birthday only. There's another uh, paper that uh, published in on a World Obesity Day in Lancet, our this global group. We showed that even in youngsters, diabetes is getting worse by the day. Now, what is most concerning? <clears throat> we published a paper in Nature in to, just uh, a year before this uh, pandemic uh, uh, in May 2019. Which shows now this whole gamut of obesity epidemic that was occurring uh, primarily in the urban and semi-urban areas is now moving to rural areas. And in future, the, mo the most important driver of obesity would be increase in rural obesity. And we know predominant uh, uh, India is uh, rural. And uh, Rakesh just now showed you those crowds. And in those places, things have not become better. And once this epidemic of obesity translates into uh, non-communicable diseases, hell is going to break out, you know. Uh, then every fortnight a visit, every month a visit, so poor understanding of different forms of health. So that's, this is the this, this recent uh, paper that we published again. In a younger generation, what trajectory is getting? Getting much worse every, every half a decade. Now, that is one thing. Now, this is something different. This data, uh, which came from Chennai, a part of it come from Chennai, which fundamentally shows that one-liner, if you look at Western world, if you look at Pama Indians, whose diabetes is as bad as in Asian Indians, that is us, the true hardcore, the Indian. We have predominantly, as pre-diabetes, impaired fasting glycemia. They have predominantly pre-diabetes IGT. IGT is a reflection of initial insulin resistance and IFG is an indicator of insulin deficiency. It means we start with insulin deficiency much earlier, right from the uh, pre-diabetes day. And this is what I had shown two decades back, much before this, two decades before this, impaired fasting glucose and impaired glucose tolerance, lack of agreement between two categories in a North Indian population. This was the first study on this globe which compared IFG and IGT. And we showed there's something different. That time I thought it's true probably for us Kashmiris only or North Indians. But today, as I showed you in this data, it is true probably for all of us. And this I rec Now look at it, 40 to 49, IFG 18.8%, IGT 2.9%. Age about 60, IFG 20%, um, I IGT 4.3%. And now look at this IFG. 20% above 60, life expectancy increased. Now, insulinopenic state is already there. This will translate into a young and old epidemic of diabetes. This generalized obesity, this uh, possible beta cell uh, deficiency is likely to lead to huge uh, change in the epidemiology of diabetes globally in general, but for our uh, population in particular, <laughs> Many times, you know, with relatively less optimal healthcare in our country is going to be a challenge in younger population. Now we see young uh, type one, uh, type two diabetics, 16, 17, 18, uh, those 
uh, kids going to the school, those polycystic ovarian ladies, dropping in our clinics with a blood sugar of 130, 140, which was fasting. And differentiating between type 1, type 2, maturity onset diabetes is going to be a bit difficult. So people need to comprehend how to do that. Fibrocalculus pancreatopathy, which is fortunately becoming a, a bit rarer, is another thing that we'll keep in mind in areas where people are still malnourished. So there are ways and means of uh, doing it. We have clinical uh, ways of doing it. But now we have investigative ways of doing it. And thankfully, these investigations are now universally available, which can be taken care of. But from a simplistic point of view, uh, from our own country's point of view, if there's a young diabetic, there's a family history of diabetes, which is very positive, three generations of how positive, yes, then monogenic diabetes. If three generations are not there, but there is a history of diabetes, likely type 2 diabetes. Uh, if there is no family history and there's ketonuria in the urine, C-peptide is low, look at possibility of type 1 diabetes mellitus if ketonuria is not there. Uh, just do a plain extra abdomen or an ultrasound and look for a a fibrocalculus pancreatopathy. And there are a myriad number of endocrine disorders uh, that can do so. We have been talking about, uh, at Librum, about cardiovascular outcome trials and the impact of different drugs. Unfortunately, there's a very little presentation of uh, these uh, relatively youngish population in those clinical trials. We do not have many people from those in, uh, 20 to 40 years in those trials. So that data also needs to be uh, generated a lot of studies have shown in younger population, it's very difficult to rationalize treatment. Uh, drug compliance is rather poor. Uh, adherence to diet is poor, that all of you who are in the field who are doing it would know it. And this is a data that only uh, published from Pune. We showed that in, in comparison to adult diabetes, young diabetes have a much worse uh, control. And as a consequence of that poor control, complications are going to be more a big chunk of people are going to develop complications uh, rather early, which will be a cause of concern because every time there's a retinopathy, huge morbidity and mortality, every time there is a, a renal dysfunction or a cardiovascular dysfunction, we have already been listening to uh, the epidemic of uh, coronary artery disease and those young deaths in, uh, in our country. Uh, one of the reasons is dysglycemia, dyslipidemia, and early onset have attention in people who are obese and diabetes related distress uh, is much commoner you know acceptance of a, a this presence of a disease is much less in people uh, who are younger than in adult people and you have as a consequence of that protracted depression and quality of life becomes uh, rather difficult and there are huge uh, behavioral abnormalities that would need to be taken care of in younger population apart from everything else Sexual health is important. If somebody gets affected with some sort of a uh, dysautonomia, a neuropsychiatric disability, leading to sexual dysfunction, that would lead to the rupture of the whole familial structure if a person is involved. And then another area that we need to look at, and you know, uh, already we are aware of the increase in uh, gestation diabetes. Now, many people with this sort of a thing occurring at 20, 30, uh, we'll walk into the pregnancy with diabetes. And we know it not only means that you have to take care of that uh, pregnancy meticulously, but also how it would entail, uh, what impact it will have on the fetus. Now data shows that whatever the maternal uh, metabolic milieu, it not only dictates the what is happening to fetus functionally, but also has a potential of dictating the structure of the fetus, the quality of the adipocytes, the quality of the insulin receptors. And that, that, that's something, you know, all of us uh, need to understand. And this is going to be a whole area that need to be looked into. So in conclusion, uh, I know there are constraints of time. Uh, what I would say is right from the beginning, firstly, this epidemic is already there. Everybody should understand it. We need to make an appropriate diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. If, uh, that's one thing. And second thing is, we need to ensure that very early there is an aggressive management. There's no thing. The fellow is 22, 23, that sort of an attitude, lackadaisical attitude cannot happen. You can, we cannot have a crores of these youngsters hovering through dialysis uh, machines and uh, angiography. So we don't have that wherewithal in our country in spite of 
whatever is happening in uh, past few decades these complications need to be prevented to what uh, extent possible and need to be earlier diagnosed uh, whenever possible and this all of us at every tier of functionality should not lose the fact that it impacts a psychological and social life and many times we brush through it that i don't sleep well the wife complains of something please take a minute or two to listen to it and is be quite rewarding uh, preventing a rupture in that family thank you so much 